couch Dogs need the lessons Welcome back to yet another awesome guitar lesson here on Lick and Riff in which I'm going to show you the most effective finger dexterity exercise. It's actually a really fun exercise and it's really challenging. It's, it's uh, surprisingly challenging. It has to do with playing chords in as many different fingerings as you can. Okay, it sounds simple, but I guarantee that it's going to challenge you. I'm going to give you uh, as many variations on this exercise as I possibly can. We're gonna start really simple and we're gonna take it to absurd levels. Okay, so uh, first I want to mention that this lesson is sponsored yet again by Skillshare because Skillshare love Lick and Riffers and they want to give you two more months of free premium membership to their platform. Skillshare, in case you don't know, is a video course learning platform. They have a website, they have an app. You click the link below in the description, it'll take you there and uh, they just have courses on everything. It's incredible. Just go there and see. They have everything from graphic design to logo design to DSLR photography to video editing to photo editing to cinematography to um, creative writing even to branding to marketing to logo design to music mixing and mastering. They just have courses on everything you can think of. Anything you want to learn they have it on Skillshare. So click the link below in the description and claim your two full months of free premium access to all their courses. You're gonna get addicted, I guarantee it. And now I'm gonna show you something else you're gonna get addicted to, which is this exercise, okay? When I say play the same chord with different fingerings, I mean just that, okay? Let's take, for example, the simplest of the simplest examples, A minor. Okay, you can play it with okay, the regular A minor finger construction, or you can play it in the barred chord construction, okay, with your four finger free, okay? And you can just switch between them. Now, you're already used to this because you're used to playing the barred chord variation, right? So this exercise, the very basic variation, is actually really easy for most of us, right? So I want you to play any rhythm pattern you can think of, anything you're comfortable with, and change the chord without, without any silence in the middle. Okay? Keep the music going. I changed the chord twice, okay? And your next challenge would be to do the same thing with C. Now there's a C-shaped bar, so some of us may already be used to it, but try it, okay? Try it with C, okay? Changing between the regular version to the bar chord version, while still keeping the music going. The next step would be to take the finger off of the fifth string and play A minor seven, okay? Which is one and two on strings two and four. You might think this is simpler than C, but now you have more variations. You can use fingers one and two. Wait for it. You can use fingers two and three. You can use fingers three and four. Ah, you see? Not so used to it. Okay, you see, I, I, I'm playing E because I'm not used to this. Okay, but after a couple of tries, it gets easier. And that's the purpose of this exercise. Okay, now after you play A minor 7, you can try different variations. You can try fingers 1 and 4. You can try fingers 2 and 4. You can try fingers 1 and 3. You see? This is not as easy as it seems. Okay, fingers one and three, to two and four, to one and three, to one and four, to one and two, to three and four, to two and four, to two and three, to two and four, to 
one and four, to two and three, to three and four, and so on and so forth. It's not as easy as it seems, as it, as, as it looks. Okay, I, I have to muster all my forces of concentration in order to pull this off. Even though I have done this exercise, okay, it's always challenging. Now, let's take the G chord. Okay, we have the regular G chord. We have this fingering, okay, with fingers one, two, and three, okay, with our little finger free. We have this fingering with our four finger free. We have this finger with our thumb, right? Thumb on the sixth string and muting the fifth string, right? And then we can choose which finger to put on. We can put on the first finger, the second finger, the third finger, the fourth, the first, right? And we can change between regular G to G with your, your thumb, G with your forefinger free, G with your little finger free, G with your thumb, G with your forefinger free, G with your thumb and the forefinger, G with your thumb and the third finger, back to this G with the little finger free, and then this G, just fingers three and four for some reason, then the thumb and the forefinger, back to this, back to this with the second finger and the thumb, you see? And I'm keeping the music going. She's going to subscribe to Skillshare right now. Yeah, go ahead. It's two months free. All right, and then you can try a D chord. The D chord is challenging. You hear the bitter patter off, okay? D can be done like this, obviously. It can be done like this, okay? The, okay, the bar shape, even though you don't need the bar. Okay, so you can put fingers two, three, and four. Okay, change between those. Okay, and then try barring. Bar the second fret with three on the second string. Okay, bar with your second finger with your little finger on the second string. Change between those two. Not as easy as it looks. It feels so weird. You're barring with your second finger and putting the little finger on the second string. Why not the third finger? Because, I don't know. I don't know, you can do that, okay? Using fingers two and three. Changing. Okay, it's not always easy to make a quick change, but the, the, the more you work on this exercise, the quicker your changes will be. Okay, there is also a surprise variation on, on this exercise for those of you who stayed up to this point. The next variation is changing between D and C. And you have this D, and you have this D. Okay, the bar on two C shape, that's also a D chord. So change between those. Okay, change between those with all the different fingerings of D. Okay, including the bar chain. Okay, with the second finger. You can also bar with your third finger with the little finger on the second string. Okay, if you can do that, then kudos to you. Okay, I'm barring with my third finger. This is the weirdest sensation ever on guitar. You can do it with A minor as well. Changing the barring finger. On the fifth fret, strings one, two, and three, with the A bass, with the fifth string. Okay? Change the fingerings. Okay? Bar with your first, second, third, fourth, third, second, first, third, Second, fourth, third, first, third, first, fourth fingers. Challenge yourself. Okay. And then play a jazz chord. Play this chord. Okay. Now 
there are variations. Okay, you can do this chord. And then do this. And then do this. And then do this. And then do this. Which are all variations on pretty much the same setting. Okay, one of them is a ninth chord, one of them is a thirteenth chord. So, I play down the fifth uh, fret, okay, um, and I bar, it's, it's this. This is the full chord, the thirteenth chord. It has the seventh, the ninth, and the thirteenth. Second finger on the fifth string on five. Four on the fourth string with your fourth finger. Your third finger bars on five on strings one, two, and three, and your little finger is on seven on the first string. So you get five, four, five, five, seven. You can change to this, okay, which is just seven, five, five, four. And now your second finger is barring. Okay, so this and this. Okay, you change the barring finger. Okay, you can play strings um, two, three, four, and five. And then you don't have that 13th. It's a ninth chord. So you can bar. And you can switch to all fingers. No bar. Basically, I, I didn't mean that one, sorry. Okay. Another variation, all right? And the ultimate test, whether your fingers are dexterous enough, is whether you can play all those shapes on the air. If you can play a C shape on the air and the fingers are at the right positions, if you can play a C shape with your second, third, and fourth fingers on the air with the bar, then you know your fingers are dexterous enough. If you can play an E-shaped bar and then an E-shaped chord on the air, okay, then it's fine. If you can play an A minor, which is the same as E, okay, and switch between the fingerings, okay, I'm, I'm correct here. Okay, my fingers are so used to these chords that I'm on the right shape, okay? Because I've practiced so much, okay? That I can play a C chord with this or this, this variation, okay? You can play a D chord. You can play a D chord with this. This is a little bit hard because you need to strain your little finger, okay? This D, you can play this D with the bar. Okay, it looks silly, but try it. Not as simple as you might think. Okay, and you can play the ninth chord, and you can play the thirteenth chord, but you can't bar because there's no resistance. But if you can approximate it, then you know you've done it. Okay, so try it. Um, before you do though, click the link in the description and claim your two free months of full premium access to all the courses on Skillshare. Okay, it's free. Go have fun with it. Go get addicted to the courses. It's high quality material and you're gonna have fun with this almost as much as you're gonna have with uh, this dexterity exercise. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.